Hi everyone, welcome back to Jen's Hangout. Today we are going to be doing part two of the pine needle baskets with mom. So today we're going to be doing, I think she's going to do the sides and all of that and finishing up the top. So also I wanted to let you know that I will be having all of her information linked down in the description box. So if you're curious about her art, uh, if you want to buy something that she has already done, it'll be down there. Also, she might have some starter kits available. One, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, that'll be on all listed down below on her Facebook art page. So you guys can go and check that out if you would like. She would really like it. Also, she does local classes if you are where we live in Oregon and Washington. Um, and that would be really cool too. Anyway, I will turn it over to mom. So here we go. Go. So good morning. It's another day. I worked on this a little bit after we paused yesterday. I filled in some more stitches, added new stitches like I showed you. So I'm at a point where I need to add a new thread again. So I thought I would just review that and show you how to do it when you're on your own. You have no friend to hold your basket work for you. So our knees, they become our vice. We put our basket work in there and hold it tight, right? Here's our old thread. I already have pulled a new thread out. I've got my foot on it down here, holding tight tension. My old thread's on the left side, my new thread's on the right. I'm gonna come in here, holding tension. That's the most important thing, right? So here we go. Our goal again is to have this knot laying right on top of this coil. So it will be covered by the next round of pine needle coil. So we're going to pull that tight, holding tension the whole time. Tie our knot and we tie a double knot just to make sure that it will not slip out of there. So that is our tutorial on how to tie on a new thread when you're on your own. I think you're better at that than you are with somebody holding it. Yes, it is easier. But you got to use your knees as a vice, and you got to use your foot to hold on the thread to hold tension. So, here we go. We will start working again. Okay. All right, here we are. We have long tails here. We're going to cut them off to about an inch and a half. We have to thread our new length of thread. You did longer thread this time? I did do a longer thread this time. I gave it good, three good pulls. So we will thread our needle. Big eyes make it easier to thread. <laughs> All right, so we are almost back to our point of movement. That's where everything starts and ends, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just continue to stitch you we, added a lot of stitches. I did. I said that. I filled in a lot of stitches. We're going to, again, go through the back, come out the front here. Sometimes you got to finagle. There we go. There we are. And pull, pull, pull. Pull that thread way back behind you so it doesn't, you don't get caught up in it. And lay this down. Okay, this time we got a much nicer placement with our knot. Lay our threads here. Treat them just as if they were pine needles. We're going to add a needle. Keep our coil fed. Pretty good here. All right, so this stitch, we got to make sure that we catch... We have to separate our stitches here. Hope you can see that. They kind of get a little close when you've added a stitch in between. That's what it'll look like on the back. So we're going to go in there. We're going to come out right there. And 
And here we go. Make sure that we catch these threads. Lay them down nice and snug. One thing I did want to mention, as you pull on your coils, your basket may have a tendency to want to curl in on itself, right? Because you're pulling on it. So as you're working your basket, make sure that you push it down. You can lay it on the table because this is your base. You want it to sit nice and flat. So push it down. Make sure that your, your base is going to be flat. And I do that pretty much with every stitch. Make sure that my, my basket is uh, maintaining the shape that I want. Okay. So from the left to the right. Pull those stitches. Make sure that your tails on that thread are tucked in. You have a coat of hair. I have a coat of hair. We're going to have some coat of hair incorporated in our basket. Yep. There we go. <laughs> I missed it. Yeah. Why not? Coat of hair is incorporated in everything that I do. Oh, yes. yes, coat of sprinkles make them definitely one of a kind. <laughs> For sure. Hi, handsome. That is one thing with this art. No two baskets will ever be the same, even if you try to make them the same. Well, an Orion just came and laid in. And there's Dakota hair. Yeah, I have an Orion at my feet. Came to help. Yeah, that's okay. So, there we go. Deck two by four. Okay, pull that nice and tight. Make sure it's laying flat. Yep. Don't want to come up through my thread yet. That is a whole different stitch. We're not going to work on that one today. Are well, you trying to do fancy stitches on uh, it? Yeah, not quite. <laughs> All right, make sure that our needles are tucked in there. Oh, you missed. Yeah, I missed it. Well, you still missed it. <laughs> I think my needle went through my thread is what it did. There we so. go. There we go. That never happens in knitting. No. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. Never. Mm -mm. Yep. And my tail wound up sticking down there a little bit. So I'm going to actually pull it up here. And I can even clip that off. Okay. That way it won't ever end up sticking out. So I just pop that guy out of there. Okay, we're almost to our point of movement. Actually, this spot right here looks like it could almost use another stitch. I think so. So we will add one. So we're just going to split that difference and come in from the back. Out through the front in the center. That will end up in the center. And that will be a new stitch. There's a coat of hairs on the table. Mm -hmm. All right, so pull that, lay that stitch where you want it to be. You could shift it one direction or the other if you need to. You can manipulate these stitches. All right, we're almost to the point of movement. Come through, there we go. Okay, I am going to work my way around one more row, so I make sure that I cover up that knot, and I will be right back with you. All right, we are back to our point of movement. We are going to start building sides now. We have been working on the base, right? So we have been going, making our coils go out on the side of each coil. So now we are going to stack them on top of each coil. So what we want to do here, this will be our next stitch. We're going to take our coil here and we are going to gently place it on top of that coil underneath there. Okay, we've been working to the side of it. Now we're going to place it up here on top. 
You have an end sticking it, out. Too. Yes, it will get anchored down with my next stitch. Okay. All right. So everybody see that? How we will start stacking them. Now you're going to have to hold this here, and as you work around your basket, it's going to want to pop, pop back to the side. So we're going to come in here just like we took our previous stitch. We're going to have to peek there. Okay. Now hold your coil there. Pull your stitch through. See, that needle's all tucked in there now. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So, remember to always feed your coil. Don't work with a loose coil and don't work with loose stitches. Tuck it in there. You don't have to push that new needle all the way back in here. You can push it to anywhere in here just where it kind of feels snug. All right. So our next stitch, you're going to have to look back here, maybe kind of turn it a little where you can look up front and bring that needle through there. Sorry about the shaking. Uh, sometimes it gets a little hard to pull your needle through. You can always use needle nose pliers if you have to pull hard enough on, the, on your sewing needle. I've had to do that with some of my knitting sometimes with my hats. They get yeah. a little too... The only thing you want to watch when you use the needle nose pliers is that you don't bend your mm -hmm. sewing needle. I have broke several. Yeah. So, okay. We continue to move that coil to where we are stacking it on top of the previous one. Come in on the left. This is a little trickier to get this first row. You're going to come out there on the right. I could see where a thimble would be handy for your finger. Well, maybe, yeah. I've never been able to work with a thimble. But. And again, put it there, hold it tight. If you have sensitive fingers. Yeah. Okay, look to the back. Bring it to the front here. Tuck it in there. Go in on the left, come out on the right side of that stitch. You can already start to see how this is going to mm -hmm. build the side. All right. We are going to continue around that way. And again, your next row, when we get around there, it'll come right up on top of this one and it will build sides. So to create shapes, if you want straight sides you stack your coils directly on top of each other just like my fingers here right if you want your your basket to slope out you're going to take that pine needle coil and you're going to gently manipulate it a little to the outside okay that makes sense so you're going to be sloping it basically mm -hmm. all right but you're going to have to manipulate that at every stitch Mm -hmm. So we're going to work on straight sides. We're going to stack. That way you don't, but if you wanted to, for it to slope, you would, I don't know if you can see that. Um, you would take, there's your little finger, your next finger would go a little to the outside, then the next one would go a little to the outside, next one a little to the outside. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to work on going around here. And I'm going to do probably two or three rows, and then I'm going to show you how to end a basket. Mm -hmm. I'll wait.
we are at the point of movement again. We've made one round. So we just continue to stack. So this one will just stack right on top of the other one. Now this is where you're going to have to be a little careful. If you, if you don't put tension against your coil as you're working it, your basket will curl in on itself just because of the nature of how you're pulling your thread, right? So mm -hmm. what I do is I usually use my thumb to support it. So when I go in back here, come out, uh, about the middle of your coil if you can, right there, I hope you can see that. Stop shaking. Okay, so as I'm gonna pull on this, I'm going to be pulling really twi really tight. Twite? Twite, yeah. <laughs> Towards the inside of my basket, right? I'm pulling this direction. So I want to hold tension, pressure, against that coil so it keeps it straight. I do that with every stitch. Again, um, the pine needle coils are very malleable, if that's the proper term, mm -hmm. um, you can manipulate them, right? So if I wanted my basket to come in, I would just pull that coil a little further in. I want it to rear out. I would just put extra pressure and it would go on a little on the outside rather than being stacked directly on top. Mm -hmm. So I will continue to work my way around. And you continue that process until you get the height that you want. We're just going to make a shallow little basket today. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to continue to work on.